Hi, my name is Rachel Paxton, and today I'm going to show you how to can spaghetti sauce. In this class, you will learn how to make and can homemade spaghetti sauce. I'll lead you through the process step by step. I'll give you the recipe and the canning supply list that you can download for future reference. You'll find those in your course materials, and you'll also gain the confidence you need to try more pressure canning recipes on your own. My name is Rachel Paxton and I'm a freelance writer and mom of five children ages 28 to 6. This is me and my husband Dave. We've been married for 20 years and this is three of our children. Zachary and Christian are twins, are almost 11 and Trenton is 6. We also have 28 and 26 year old daughters. I've been canning for more than 20 years and I'm also the owner of the website creativehomemaking.com. For this recipe you're going to need 24 cups of chopped tomatoes, two pounds of ground beef, five cloves of garlic, a cup of onion, two cups of mushrooms, which are optional, four tablespoons of fresh or dried parsley, a quarter cup brown sugar, two tablespoons of dried oregano, two teaspoons of salt, a teaspoon of black pepper, and clear gel is optional, and you could also add a cup of bell peppers to this if you would like, or you can leave them out. You'll also need a pressure canner, a jar lifter, wide mouth funnel, five to six quart canning jars, and a food mill is optional. This is what a pressure canner looks like. There are two kinds of pressure canners, a dial gauge canner and a weighted gauge canner. I have a dial gauge canner. This is one of the most common ones that you'll find. So that's what I'm going to show you how to use. There's a link to this on your supply list if you need to order one from Amazon. They're about $75. If you're just getting started in canning, you'll, you'll want to get a pressure canner because you can use a pressure canner for boiling water canning or pressure canning. You can only use a boiling water canner for boiling water canning. So this is a very useful tool if you're going to do all kinds of canning. You're also going to need a jar lifter. The wide mouth funnel is nice. It sits on the top of your jar and helps you get your food in the jar without tipping anything over. I usually sterilize my jars, rings, and lids in the dishwasher. If you don't have a dishwasher, you can put them in boiling water on the stove to, to sterilize them, but the dishwasher is easier if you have that available and you just make sure they're still hot when you're ready to use them. First, you want to fill your pressure canner with about three inches of water and get it started boiling. Next, you chop your tomatoes and put them in a stock pot. You don't need to worry about taking the peels or seeds out because we'll do that with the food mill. You want to simmer for about 20 minutes or until the tomatoes are nice and soft. And while that's cooking, you can chop up the onions and garlic. And after you get that done, you want to use a large frying pan and brown your hamburger, onions, garlic, and mushrooms, if you're going to use mushrooms. After the tomatoes are cooked, you want to run them through a food mill. If you don't have a food mill, you can um, use a strainer and push the tomatoes through it with a spoon. It's a little bit more work to do that, but if you don't have a food mill, that will work. Um, Food mills are really handy. They're great for making applesauce and all kinds of syrup and, and pretty much any kind of sauce. So if you're going to do a lot of canning and you want to make sure to get all your peels and seeds out of things, you really want to have one of these. This one is stainless steel. It will last a long time. It costs about $40. Um, there's a link to this on your supply list for Amazon. So after you run the tomatoes through there, you want to put the sauce back in your stock pot and add your hamburger mixture and all your spices. And you can taste it and see if you like how it tastes. You can adjust the spices in this recipe without causing any problems with the canning recipe. You might find that your spaghetti sauce is a little bit too thin. You don't want it to be super thick because it will get thicker as it as it cooks in the pressure canner because the liquid will evaporate out of the jar. But if it's really thin, you can add a little clear gel. Clear gel is used in the place of cornstarch. You can't use cornstarch for canning. It becomes unstable during the canning process. So clear gel is a great thickener 
There's two kinds of clear gel. There's regular clear gel that needs to be heated to thicken just like cornstarch. But there's also another product called Ultra Gel that will thicken in cold or um, you don't have to heat it to thicken. It, you can use it in cold products also. So I usually buy Ultra Gel and just like to have it on hand. You might have a hard time finding this at the store. I found it at a local health food store in the bulk section, but that's the only place I've been able to find it. You can also get it on Amazon. I've put a link to it in your supply list. So after your sauce is thickened the way you want it, or maybe just a little bit thinner than you would want it, um, ladle it into your sterilized canning jars, leaving an inch headspace. The headspace is the amount of space between the top of your spaghetti sauce and the top of the jar. The headspace is very important in pressure canning. The food in your jar will expand while it's in the pressure canner. And if you don't have enough space in your jar, your jar can explode. So just pay attention to how much headspace the recipe says to leave. Next, you want to wipe the rims of the jars with a damp paper towel or dish towel to make sure there's no food particles left on the top of the jar. I recently discovered a great tip for um, doing this with recipes that have grease in them like the hamburger I'd been having trouble with some of my jars sealing even after I'd wiped them and Realized it was from the grease on the jars won't necessarily come off just by wiping it off with water So if you use a little vinegar on your damp towel uh, That will help get the grease off of it so that your jar will seal Next you want to put your rings and lids your sterilized rings and lids on the jars they just need to be finger tight. They don't need to be super tight. Place your jars in your pressure canner and you're going to process them at 10 pounds of pressure for, at 60 minutes for pints and 70 minutes for quarts. This is what a pressure canner looks like. After you get your jars in there, you're going to line up the arrows on the lid and lock it into place. Turn your heat up to high on the stove and take your pressure regulator off the vent pipe. Now as the water heats, you'll start seeing steam coming out of the vent pipe. After that happens, you want the steam to come out of the pipe for 10 minutes and then put your pressure regulator back on the vent pipe and then the pressure will start building in your pan. At that time, your lid lock will pop up. You'll know that your, can your canner is pressurized at that point and you'll start seeing the dial go up on your dial gauge. When your dial gets to 10 pounds of pressure, you want to turn your dial, your heat on your stove way down to low and watch it and make sure that it doesn't drop back down below 10 pounds because if you do, you have to start your timing over again. So as soon as it gets down to 10 and stays at 10 or 11, um, you can stop adjusting the heat on your stove and set your timer. If you live above a thousand feet in elevation, you're going to need to process for a longer processing time and uh, and at a higher pressure. So if that is the case, you need to check your um, altitude adjustment chart in your course materials and uh, that will give you some guidelines for how to process, process the jars in that case. If you live in thousand feet or below an elevation, you don't need to worry about it and just follow the directions in this recipe. After the timer's up, you just need to turn the heat off and let the pan sit until the lid lock goes back down. Then you'll know that the pressure is out in the pan. You don't ever want to open the lid while the lid lock is up. So after the lid lock goes down, about five or 10 minutes later, you can take the lid off and um, take the jars out. Use a jar lifter to take them out and set them on a towel on the kitchen counter to cool. Let your jars sit on the counter till they're cool. Um, it can take it'll take at least 12 hours for them to be completely cooled and settled. It's recommended to let them sit for 24 hours before you move them. Usually your jars will seal in the pressure canner, but it can take 15 to 20 minutes for them to seal after they come out of the canner. You should hear a pinging noise when they seal. You can tell if it's sealed or not by pushing your finger down in the middle of the lid. If it goes down and up again, then it is not sealed. It shouldn't move when you push down on it. If it's not sealed, you can still eat it. Just put it in the refrigerator and eat it within a week. And if it is sealed, you can store it in a dark, cool area for one to two years or more. 
So that's how you make spaghetti sauce. We eat a lot of spaghetti, so I was excited to get six jars of this made and put away. I know it seems like a lot of work, but when you think about it, for a couple hours work, you have six dinners for later, so that's actually not any longer than you would take making any kind of freezer meals or meals ahead of time. So I don't, it doesn't take that long at all. So this summer, when you're growing tomatoes in the garden, make sure you grow enough so that you can make a bunch of spaghetti sauce. And then I'll be sharing with you a bunch of other tomato recipes also so that you'll be able to use up all your tomatoes. So I hope you enjoy this recipe, and I hope to see you again soon.